Christi. The body and blood, Corpus Christi. Monday, payback time, Mark 12. Does it hurt being corrected? Being corrected in public hurts even more. Right? Our Lord is not so subtle way. Eh? Tells them that they are wrong. <clears throat> wrong about their self-righteousness, wrong about their narrow reading of Scripture, and wrong about how they think God works in the world. How do we listen to our agents, the bishop, the priest, the legitimate superior? You know, Jesus is not so subtle. Sometimes Jesus is not so discreet. He would correct even John the Baptist. Remember John the Baptist? In public, he would scream uh, at Herodias, at Herod, in a loud voice. That's why we say here, being corrected hurts. And being corrected in public even hurts more. Don't you imagine Jesus yelling it out as John did? I, I can never imagine him. It was a, a sweet... The Bible did say that, yeah. Oh. But, but he said directly in, in public. Yeah. He I said think, that. I think people will appreciate how it, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah. That's in human relations, though. It's not only what we say that matters, it's also how we say it. The three words, I love you, can be said that it's believable. It can be said that you know it's not true. You know it's not true. <laughs> How did you know it was real? We were exposed to it. <laughs> or if you can turn back the ends of time. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Number two, another servant. God doesn't give up on us after one try. It's a number of times, number of messengers to draw us closer to Him. What do we miss, the clues that God sends us? Sometimes an email, sometimes a phone call, sometimes you come across someone, someone sometimes in a class like this, God can use anybody. But where do we miss the clues that God sends us? Remember my story about the Jewish guy? He was Hasidic and you know, he's Orthodox Jew. And there was a great flood. He was on the, uh, on the roof, his rooftop of his house. And then the government sends a chopper to rescue him. He refused. No, God will rescue me. Then God said, someone else, I forgot, but that's a story. He refused. No, God was there. And then eventually he died. And then when he was in front of the throne of God, immediately he accused God. Why did you let me die? Why did you let me die? I was counting on you to save me. And God said, but I sent you a chopper. I sent you a rescuer. I sent you all this help, but you refused. In other words, how open are we to discerning God's messages to us? Unfortunately, it can come in any form. Sometimes our spouse, sometimes our parents, sometimes even our children. God can use anyone. It's up to you and to me to be able to listen. The good news is God does not stop trying. He just keeps on trying. So where do we miss the clues? Number three, this is the air. Remember the story in Mark 12, right? Mm -hmm. About the vineyard, he sent his messenger, they killed the servant, they killed him. Another servant, they beat him to, oh, to the point of death. And then, ah, maybe they will honor my son. So he sent his son. Ah, oh, he's the heir. Let's go kill him. So what father would give an inheritance to someone who killed his son? It doesn't make sense. 
right? If, if, you want, if you want the vineyard, don't kill the son. Maybe you can pull the son, or maybe you can take the son hostage. But two sons, but don't kill the son. Then again, sin doesn't make sense either. Many times we reject Christ in our life, and then wonder why our prayers seem unanswered. Remember I gave you uh, three Fridays ago, the possible answers of God to our prayers. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I give that to you. So what could we be thinking? How often do I offer up a sacrifice or an act of charity for a prayer intention? Tuesday, Mark 12 again, continuation, setting the trap. Oh, this is what I was talking about, Mark 12. They're using a flattery. People can say, oh, I know you're a very intelligent person. You can answer this. Oh, I know oh, you're a good parent. Uh, you already have two kids. Uh, you know, the way they said it to Jesus Christ was, we know you're, you're a man from God. We know you're on the side of the truth. So, you know, flattery. And Jesus wants us to be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. Matthew 10. Bottom line is let Jesus shape your day. If you have Jesus shaping your day, you're fine. Number two, lying in wait. Now this is about, remember this? <clears throat> is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? That question. Putting Jesus on the spot. If he says illegal, then they have reason to report him to the Roman authorities. If they say it's the if it's if, if they say it's legal, they will say, What about what you're preaching? So either way, Jesus loses. That's why Jesus said, Give me a coin. Give to God what is God's, and to Caesar what Caesar's. Now Remember what I just said about Matthew 5. Simply say yes or no. It says here, how do we decide what belongs to God? How do we decide what belongs to Caesar? Then that's when things get tricky. We are called as Christians to develop our gifts, our intelligence, our prayer life, so as to make the right choices. So use your gifts, use your intelligence, and use your prayer life. The trap is proud. The game is over. Decide. Nothing can so pride us as freedom. It pride Jesus, audience. How am I using my own freedom? How am I using the time God gives me? How am I using the time God gives me? That's the trap. Wednesday. Continuation of Mark chapter 12. Love the ones you're with. If we only understood the power of God. If you go through such a series of bad news, your spouse leaves you, you lose your job, uh, a, fire, a fire in the house and got your house, what sort of else can happen? Look at Mark 12, Wednesday. This is the Bible study materials. If we only understood the power of God, what's the use? Evil seems to be winning on all sides. Families are breaking down. We must believe in the power of God. Probably easier said than done. Don't forget that God is, remains in charge. We Christians are called, according to Pope Benedict XVI, to be witnesses to joy and hope. We must witness to joy and hope. Number two, reading the scriptures. The study of scripture is, as it were, the soul of sacred theology. Because you don't know the scripture, you don't know me. 
who said that? Here is Jesus who said that in Mark 12. One doctor of the church said that too. St. Jerome. Remember St. Jerome? Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. That's why we do what we do. You don't know what I'm about. My message of mercy, my call to repentance, that must be highlighted if you have highlighter. Mercy, repentance, seek out the lost sheep. That's what Jesus is all about. Mercy, meaning don't worry what you have done. Mercy is greater than any of those. Just repent. So many of Christ's supposed followers spend their time, you know, that's another thing. You hear many people criticizing the church, especially the scandal with the priests and all those. But that's not the spirit that, that Jesus wants us to convey. What Jesus wants us to convey is unity. And have you heard of something like, if you have nothing good to say, just, just don't say it. Mm -hmm. Whatever you and I say must be, must be words that build up, not destroy. That's what I thought Luther should have done. And Luther, Luther, you know, did, did you know that Martin Luther did not intend to, to uh, create various congregations. He didn't, he didn't intend that. He just wanted corrections. He just wanted reforms. But what happened was, those who followed him, he couldn't control. Wesley. Not Wesley Snipes. Uh, last name Wesley and a whole host of others. <coughs> those so-called reformers. They were the ones that really, it's not Luther. Luther was playing the rosary. Luther was in love with the Blessed Mother. If you read his life, his story, he just wanted reforms. It's those that followed him that created all this scandal. Number three, like the angels in heaven, marriage is beautiful, it's a sacrament. But it can only bring relative happiness at best. Look at that last sentence. The goal is to lead spouses to heaven. If you have spouse, your number one goal is to take your spouse with you to heaven. I have seen many men, many men, the wife is so religious, they go to church and they don't. While they understand that the goal is for their spouse to go to heaven, they themselves don't seem, don't seem like to go to heaven. <clears throat> there, was, uh, there was one gentleman that, I don't know, I, I, I said it rather bluntly, that going to Mass on Sunday is not sufficient. For, for, for your pain to grow, Going to Mass every Sunday is not enough. You really have to study your faith. By now, with all the handouts that I've handed out, there's no way in the world you would have, or you would, this would have, any of these would have occurred to you just going to Mass. There's no way. All of these. Thursday, self donation. I like that word, self-donation. I call it self-gifting. Self-gifting. When you give out yourself, keep everything. No withholding. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is in darkness. Second book of John, chapter 1, verse 9. Christianity is not strictly a me and Jesus affair. That's why whenever I hear people say, oh, it's just between me and God. No. That's not true. What do you mean, you and your God? What about your name? The two greatest commandments. Love God above all, love your neighbors. Jesus loves them. What happened to that second one? Right? Such a faith can fall into self-centeredness and disdain of the world. 
We are called to be leaven in the world, to bring light to the darkness. Jesus wants us to be His arms and legs and voice in the world. <clears throat> in, my little, in my own unworthiness, I'm trying to be the voice. Anyone here is trying to be an arm of Jesus? Or leg of Jesus? What do you want to be, Cass? His tongue. His what? Tongue. Tongue? Oh, voice. You mean his voice? Yeah, his voice. Yeah. God may be asking you to get more involved in your parish. Majority of the people just they just come, they sit in the pew, and then they leave. Has anyone asked, what can I do for my parish? Again, what you can do to build up. And then, those who don't help are the ones who complain a lot too. You notice that? Those who don't do anything in the parish, they're the ones who, who demand so much more. Father, it's so hot. Father, it's too dark. What have you done to help? It takes too long for the whole, the homily is too long for the, the uh, communion, it's a long line. <laughs> they complain about everything. The music is the same every Sunday. The gift of self is the greatest gift. I like that. You must give yourself. So, <clears throat> burnt offerings are not enough. You know, burnt offerings from the Old Testament. That's external. We let go of things, money, use, clothes, furniture, much faster than we let go of our time, our way of thinking. If we Open, if we log on the internet and there's something uh, on sale, oh, this is cheap. This is cheap. You release money right away. Mm -hmm. But what about your time? What about your thinking? Number three, fear of God's demands. Sacrificing a sheep or a goat wasn't enough anymore. Christ wanted them to give of themselves. In other words, the very sacrifice of self. That's what Jesus did. Jesus gave up Himself. Totally. What's stopping you and me from doing the same? Friday, Mark chapter 12 again, a good homily, speaking for all to hear. Jesus was speaking to everyone. Using their own scriptures, Jesus points to this truth. The Messiah is both Son and Lord. To this day, many Jews still don't accept that. The scribes opposed Jesus for many reasons. Number one, jealousy. They were jealous of Him. Ignorance. Because they don't understand the messages of God. What, what Jesus was all about. And their pride. If you study closely, do you know that part of the reason the scribes and the Pharisees were against Jesus was if people would continue hearing the teaching of Jesus, the scribes and the Pharisees would lose their positions. They would lose their, you know how much they value their positions. They wear robes, special robes, so they would gain the respect of people. They wanted to be greeted in the marketplace. Remember that? They wanted to be sitting in the most prominent spots, positions. And they would lose all those privileges if Jesus would have it his way. 
That's part of the reason why they oppose Jesus. There's no way they would listen to Jesus' teaching. Hearing with delight. Prayer is a difficult and challenging art. Why is prayer difficult? Because we're talking to someone whom we do not see. We don't usually feel anything and get nothing out of it. Prayer is not about feelings. That's, keep that in mind. Prayer is not about feelings. It's about loving. It's an experience that should move us in some way to change. That's beautiful. If you're not touched by that, I don't know what will. Again, prayer is not about feelings. A lot of people who are or slain in the Holy Spirit in the Back of the Spirit seminar, they feel, they feel, it's feeling. They feel that uh, they've been born again, that they have, they have accepted Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. But that's just a feeling. It comes, it goes. That's not what prayer is about. Prayer is about loving. Prayer is about loving. It's not feeling. Saturday, the great contrast. We've covered Mark chapter 12 the whole week. A scalpel to my vanity. The scribes did everything right in the eyes of men. But Jesus could see it was all a facade. You know, facade. It's just a front. What we wear, the car we drive, and the titles or letters that follow our name seem to give us our self-worth. Have you heard people in social events? Let me call on engineer so-and-so. Let me call on architect so-and-so. Let me call on doctor so-and-so. They want those, those titles. Because it's giving them self-worth. Guess what? They don't mean anything. This man means this man of means brought nothing but condemnation upon themselves. Will you see it? Mark chapter 12. Their position of leadership and learning placed great responsibility upon them. But some of them use it to take advantage of others. I was once sitting in a meeting and, you know, they were asked to introduce ourselves. So, I'm a son of a dean of college, I'm a, I'm a son of a doctor, I'm a daughter of, uh, of a general, you know, all sorts of things. <clears throat> and then it, when it was my turn, all I said was, I'm the son of my father and my mother. <laughs> I probably came across, because some of them didn't laugh, because that's my intention. That's all that matters. Because of this, Mark chapter 12. Eliminating my egotism. Egotism. For whom do I live? I underline self-love. 